We are live. We are starting, guys. <laughs> Welcome. It's good to see all of you. Uh, if it's okay with you, we'd like to start our meeting by uh, trying to get a motion to approve the minutes from the uh, executive committee held on August 21st, 2013. Are there any additions or corrections? I'll make that motion to approve. Uh, yes, I have a second. Oh, okay. okay. Let's get a second to the motion and then we'll get your correction, sir. Is there a second to the motion to approve, Mayor Brothers? Okay, now, sir. Mr. Lawrence? On the very first page where <laughs> we have uh, given a recap of my financial report, the fund balance of 49000 is a little short. That should be 56740 Fifty six seven forty is the okay. Mary said she had trouble with my mumbling on the I had trouble here, so I was my friend. It was eleven o'clock at night though, I didn't say that. Well, we heard we heard you took the rest of it to the casino. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other additions or corrections? All right. Um Patty Hornbuckle, will you uh Make remake your motion with that amend amendment, please, to make that, that correction. With the corrections, okay. I, I make the motion. Thank you. Yeah. And Mayor Rosen, you'll second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? All right. You've heard that motion from uh, Patty Hornbuckle, seconded by Mayor Brotherton. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. The motion carries. Thank you. Next, the treasurer's report, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, just passing out our. Eight months through August 31st. Uh, Speak up, John. If uh, y'all got a copy, we have a simple statement of receipts and disbursement. The first page balance sheet uh, basically reflects our cash in the bank of 79233 at August 31st. Uh, have no liabilities anymore, so our fund balance is 79233 On page two, uh, we list the budgets and donations, which is supported by the page three schedule, and also the enterprise zone certification fees. Uh, also listed on the second page of $73,398 and uh, pledges and donations so far this year is $37,800. Uh, referring to that list of donations, uh, I don't know it's good reporting, but I have added uh, those contributions as to who they were for in support of the director's uh, $1,000. Uh, I think uh, probably that's uh, oh, any report publication, I'd probably take them all to the yeah, show sure. them as a column. Uh, expenses, uh, total 41000 for uh, eight months, which is an average of 5100 a month, and times 12, we're right at our $60,000 or more or less. Uh, budget for uh, most years. Uh, uh, expenses are all detailed there, and uh, the balance in our bank account today is $75,400, reflecting only that we paid the, uh, uh, most of the expenses except for the phone, I think, for uh, September. And, Thank you, sir. Are there any questions for Mr. Lawrence? All right. Is there a motion to approve Mr. Lawrence with your time? So moved. Is there a second, Mary Renner? Discussion? All right. You've heard that motion from Mr. Hines, seconded by Mary Renner. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence, and thank you for making the copies of that for tomorrow night. Uh, director's report. Mary Renner. Yes. Um, well, not great news, but not really bad news. From DCEO, uh, we have been eliminated uh, in terms of 
project list. Actually, every site in Illinois was eliminated because they decided that Nebraska and southern Iowa had a better supply of corn stalks for their raw material, so they decided to build a plant in Nebraska. Uh, in talking to uh, David Pearson about it, he said that, that apparently there's plan on building more plants of this kind in the future, and as a result of that, apparently the site selector said that he got some very quality information from Illinois and that they were keeping those because Illinois would be a logical place for them to go in the future. But they're starting off with, I guess, what they find to be the most plentiful supply of raw materials, which makes sense. So um, we're now we're out this time, but it was as I said before, I didn't really expect anything, but it was great going through the exercise, and I think it was really important that we did that. Um, talked to Todd Ely about the MDL site. Um, he just basically said that um, not much that they were taking some things into consideration and dealing with some potential ideas and but there was nothing really concrete about what they were going to do with the property. At some point, they were probably going to develop a marketing strategy. And um, you know, he sort of intimated that they might have uh, prospects that were interested, but I don't know whether I would really take that too seriously. I mean, I don't think they're, I think they're undecided at this point about what's going to happen with that. Nothing on Rhino Energy. Um, I'd like to spend just a moment talking about this whole rock-solid produce issue. Uh, I, I briefed Dick on it when it occurred. Uh, Himang DeVay, who is the property owner and is an um, investor from Boston, he has turned it over to a lady from, um, who's a realtor, a broker specializing in selling farms and greenhouses and things like that. She's out of Kentucky. Uh, I received a call from a potential prospect for the building, uh, and I, I talked to this woman at length. She supposedly represented a series of investors from the East Coast. She was a retired professor from the University of Ohio, and she, it, it was just an unusual conversation. Um, she just, I just didn't, I, I, you know, I've, I've done this long enough to understand that you get a certain feeling about things, and I wasn't very comfortable about this whole conversation. I ended up calling the uh, realtor uh, uh, to tell her about this conversation because I knew that this person had had contact with her, and I wanted to make sure she was informed about it. Well, the upshot of the conversation with the realtor is that under no circumstances was I to talk to any prospect about this building. And um, there was some confusion from the, from the original call from the prospect who told me that this was not only a sale of the building, but it was a quote unquote asset sale. And I said, well, you know, what exactly does that mean? That can mean many things to different people. And she said, well, they're selling the business. And she was concerned because they wouldn't disclose their customers and their sales of the last year and so forth and so on. Well, I said, it's not my understanding they're selling the business. My understanding was that they're selling the building only. So when I called the realtor, the realtor said, no, they are not selling the business. They are, in fact, selling the building. And um, but she very, in no uncertain terms, said to me, you are not to talk to any prospects. Uh, I've dealt with economic development people for a long time, and I know what their job is. And you know you could get sued if you misrepresented Mr. DeBay and all these kinds of things. And I, I said to her, well, you know, um, that's perfectly fine. I'm willing to do it however you want to do it. Uh, I'm glad we've had this conversation because no one's really told me that, you know, until now. And so the whole point being, I won't be reporting on this probably unless they call me and tell me that they've got a prospect. I think what's likely to happen is that they're going to sell the greenhouse. We won't know anything about it till after the fact. 
but I just want you to know that that transpired because it's not for lack of interest on my part. It's the fact that uh, they let me know in no uncertain terms that I was not. My guess is they'll be back because at some point they're going to want to talk about what the community can do sure. to yeah. assist them, and they can't do that without talking to us. So my guess is that they'll be back. Either that or it'll sit there and rot. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's a dumb to, way for her to approach it. I yeah. think exactly. dumb. But, according you know. to um, the, this lady who called me the retired professor, the this greenhouse industry, greenhouse properties, are very hot. And um, this is a very, she said there's going to be a great deal of interest in this. So, I mean... I don't know, but I because I don't I don't know much about that industry, but apparently there are a lot of interested parties and there isn't that much inventory. So, you know, I, I would think they're probably sell quickly. Good for nature, really but anyway, nice. that's really that's kind of that. Uh, nothing, you know, new on the clean line. Um, does everyone know about the fact that there's gonna be an update meeting on the Amron uh, Illinois Rivers project and that? The Farm Bureau, did you get an invitation, Greg? Uh, I don't know if I've got it. I think I've seen one email. So it was okay. a couple months ago, I think. Well, it's on September 24th at 6 p.m. at the Week Alliance Club. I'm going. I, I'm going to attend it. So I got both the email from the Farm Bureau and a postcard from the Farm Bureau. Yeah, and I got was, nothing. The yeah, only reason I, I know about is because Patty. I thought, mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you got this? <laughs> it was really odd that I would get it and you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, for whatever reasons, I wasn't on her mailing list. So I, okay. uh, Melissa, Melissa. Uh, I talked to Melissa, and now she has all that content information. But I'm going to attend that. So that's just an update regarding that. What is that, Jim? 30 miles. So. They, yeah, the Commerce right. Commission said they weren't going to approve this silly stuff. Well, it was my understanding some of the... Uh, wording was out of whack on that so rather than they said we'll fix it and come back or something to that effect and the article I read wasn't that concerning that it's not going to happen they just needed some some more wording in there to clarify some things that might be yeah and I think they didn't substantiate for whatever reasons cost efficiencies in that 30 mile portion of the of the development, yeah. and I don't understand that because you'd think they'd use the same philosophy for everything. But well, I mean, it's a quarter to that big pivot point there in pain. I don't know how how you can miss that. I don't know, but anyway, I, I'll have an update on that. You know, after I go to the meeting. Ah, Dominion. I had a wonderful uh, retention call with C.J. Saladino yesterday, and uh, they are in fact doing very well. Um, they are in the process of probably hiring eight people. Uh, he said, I was asking him exactly how they went about doing that, and he said um, the, the way that they advertise is basically monster.com, the newspaper, but primarily word of mouth. And because these jobs are such great jobs and so sought after, uh, that he said by the time they posted them inside the facility, they got all kinds of uh, applications. And he said they just had like a hundred applications, I guess. The challenge has been an electrical engineer, but um, he said that's just going to take a little more time to fill. I was asking him, I said, just, just for the sake of sort of interest here, what does an incoming person, let's just take a maintenance operator, or, you know, an operator, of some kind of uh, equipment. What is their starting salary? It was over sixty-two thousand dollars. That's the nice. base. Wow. That is the base. Beyond the base, they have uh, the what's it called? Equipower, I believe, is the company that bought them. They do not have a pension plan or an after-retirement health care plan. But what they do, if the employee contributes six percent to the um, 401k every year, they match it with four percent. And then you have, as an employee, two opportunities to earn an additional bonus. So he was telling me that theoretically, even just a starting person in those classifications could earn as much as seventy-three thousand. So you know, I mean that. I, 
it's just incredible. He he seems to be very optimistic about you know what the future is for the plant there. They um, he, they have 143 employees at the plant, and he said they probably support over a hundred other extraneous employees that are dependent upon the plant for one reason or another being there. He has no reason to believe at this point that that's going to go any place but up. Doesn't know how much. Um, they did lose a few, a few employees just because when this um, buyout occurred, some people elected to stay with Dominion, I guess, for you know obvious reasons. I guess they were vested and so forth. Um, anyway, it was a very good meeting. He had nothing but really good things to say about uh, Christian County and about doing business here and about you know what he felt the new owners felt about it. So everything looks really good. He said they were going to have some some projects, of course, coming up, continuing projects uh, that you know. And I, I told him how much we appreciated the fact that he he didn't turn around and ask for his money to be refunded when they changed the law on the enterprise on camp and he said, Oh, I wouldn't ever do that. So I mean it was like it just really was a great meeting. Really, really good. Just nothing but good news. So that's kind of that. Um, nothing really significant otherwise to report here except that uh, I think Dick's going to touch on the meeting we had with Matt Beckley and also the TDA Hopper property. Um, that's it. Yes. Good. Any questions for Mary? Skip anything. Uh, yes, sir. Mary, is Dominion all coal-fired generation? Yes. Is it uh, just plain coal or stoker coal? Or? I, you know, I don't know that, John. I just know it. I mean, see, it's coal fired. I know that because this is the first coal fired plant <coughs> this particular owner has in their portfolio. <coughs> and the new owner. They get their coal from like Farmersville or? Uh, I think they get their coal from. I think it's still. West, out west, Utah, Wyoming, Wyoming, low sulfur country. Mm -hmm. I think they bring, yeah, they bring it in. That's what we think, John, but I'm not sure of that. I think I so. Didn't hear that. I, we think that they bring in the coal from either Utah or one of the western states that has oh, lower right. sulfur content coal. I, I'm pretty sure, I'm 98 percent sure. We yeah. think that's right, but we're not positive. Yeah. Okay. Does that answer your question, sir? Yes, sir. All right. Are, is there a motion to approve Mary's report? So moved. Mr. Lawrence, is there a second? Second. Okay. Kruger. I'm sorry, I saw D. Sorry. Discussion? All right. You've heard that motion from Mr. Lawrence, seconded by uh, D. Kruger. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Deere, could you give us a paint update, sir, at your convenience? Just for a quick uh, development on Route 51 is moving along real well. The assumption bypass is nearing uh, finishing. Uh, our, our local construction company and the buyer folks are working on the next leg, and boy, they're going at it. And uh, that will come. But those of you that, that recall uh, the old S curves north of 51, north of the Rosebud, that will bring it to that point. Um, Mayor Sipes has negotiated with DOT, and if needed, they've agreed to cut the paint and bypass in half, which would take it from the S curves to Route 16, and then Route 16 south if needed financially. Um, we sort of see it, if it comes to Route 16, the concentration will probably shift to the south and start building north, and um, if that should happen, Route uh, four lane road would end up paying for a long time, which is not a bad thing. No. Mm -hmm. um, that gives us the opportunity for some of the developers that are looking at the paint area to go ahead and do the, 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 There's one big project sitting out there just sort of waiting for the shoe to fall or whatever it may. You know, I, I, I think they want to see a firmer date on, on when things are going to happen, and we're working real hard with DOT trying to, trying to give them that date. But, uh, um, uh, you know, we lost the uh, countertop company out south of Pena, 
and uh, Terry Hinchin's Automotive Electronic Group bought that building and they're moving out to that which will leave their building vacant and I've already met with Terry and we've um, at his discretion I've made a, a, a booklet up on I'm not a realtor by any means but as an economic developer I put together a, a document on his building in a nice folder and said hey you know when you're ready we'll make up however many of these you want and give you a realtor, whatever you want to do, you know. That's great. Um, and that building has some possibilities. Um, Where's that building, Jim? My mind's it's not the old it. rural rural Buick. By oh, the park, okay. by the park. Got you. Got you. Got you. I know park. what it is. And got you. Got you. Uh, pretty good size. There's some geography there. I mean, you can do they're, a little bit of anything. In they're there. about moved out. Yeah. They're, they're all working down at the old Are they really? uh, yeah. countertop place. So oh. I'll... Uh, They've remodeled it. And it looks a lot yeah. nicer than it did before. They did a good job. We're still talking uh, with some developers on the possibility of some uh, uh, strip centers in the paint area. Um, a lot of interest in downtown paint as far as um, what we might be able to do with the future of the buildings in downtown paint. Uh, and uh, I don't know, after the Tenasca thing fell down, some of the economic momentum sort of slowed down on us down there as much probably did here too. Yeah, um, but uh, we're still treading water and we're, you know, still doing things and trying to make Pena look as best we can in relationship to Christian County. Very good, sir. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Deer? Thank you, Mr. Deer. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and late, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think what it was. I, I called Matt Beckley. Do you remember our discussion replacing Mr. Lawrence? I was to get a hold of Matt Beckley. I did do that. I had about an hour and a half meeting with Mr. Beckley at his office. Uh, I tried to stress um, longevity. We were hopeful that he would take the job and then get out of it quickly after he got into it. Um, I think perhaps John among others, had talked a little bit with Matt. He had some idea of what we do and how we do it. We gave him all the financials. We gave him all of the documentation that would be a relative to uh, our financial reports. Gave him TDA stuff, too, because if you recall, we're going to have him be the accountant for both. I did talk to him about how important we felt that was. I talked to him a lot about accessibility to Mary. Uh, when we call, we need something or we wouldn't be bothering you, and we need to have you understanding that you need to respond to her uh, fast. You know, it, it's typically something that we need help with. And he, he was very, uh, he's a very laid back guy. He's a nice fella. He's married, he's partners with uh, Roger Hickman and Mike Specia out in there in the Marsango Plaza. Do you guys know where that is? I want to make sure that you knew about him. Mm -hmm. My guess would be he's in his low to mid 40s. Would that be halfway? Yeah, I anything? Would say that. Yeah, about right? So low to mid 40s. Um, so I had a real good first meeting with him. Um, I gave him all this history of CCEDC and TDA. And I mean, we had a good long talk. He seems very interested. His family does live here. He's, as I mentioned, he's married to Mike's daughter. She's a teacher at the junior high with my wife. So we know all the family real well. In fact, the gal was a student of Cindy's back in the day uh, of my wife. So Cindy knows her real well. But they seem to be locked into the community. He's very interested in job creation. Uh, he certainly passed, not that he had to pass my test, but he did pass my test in terms of uh, whether I thought he would be good to work with and good for us to work with. I then set up a meeting with Ken Hart because he's the president of TDA and Mary and D. I think D had a conflict yeah. on that particular day and did not end up being able to meet with us. So it was Ken and Mary and I, we met with him here. I'd say we met for an hour, is that about right? And Mary was able to ask him the questions that she wanted to ask him. Um, I did talk a lot about the, the money part of it. In other words, will you charge us the same amount that uh, John has been gracious enough to do this for us at, his, at, at the rate of, uh, he kind of blended what he did, I think. Uh, I, I hate to say John's fee, I'm not sure I should do that right now, and I don't think I'll embarrass John by doing that. But let's just say he blended the rate between uh, John's secretary, 
Jody, who's over in his office. Obviously, she's a little lower rate and John's a little higher rate, so he kind of blended it for us. And both organizations pay him based upon that blended rate. Um, he has a tough time. He, they also own a call center uh, where in January and February he, he's pretty busy during that time. That's going to be his time when he's going to be less accessible to Mary. Uh, we all believe, and when I say we all, I mean Mary and myself and Ken Hart believe that this guy's the guy for it. So I, he's getting together. We're going to get back with him. He's going to give us a real brief resume. But I'd like to make the recommendation to you that we hire Matt Beckley to replace He knows the timetable with John. He understands that John is going to uh, be with us through the end of June 2014, that John will remain on the board. We have some time. The reason we're doing this so much in advance is we have time for Matt to get with John, assuming that our board of directors approves our recommendation, assuming that you approve of it. Um, then there's some time that this can occur, so he's not coming in blind. He's anxious to meet with John and learn about the process. We went all into the bill paying who does what, when, or what little I knew about it. We did, and uh, we had a good conversation. I think he's the guy for it. We did not interview anyone else. He's the guy. Uh, we think he's the right guy, and so I wanted to bring that recommendation to you today and have you respond, ask any questions that you might want to ask, and if I don't know the answer, I'll try to get it. But he's a, I think he'll be with us a long time. I, I feel that he's a long going to stay in Taylorville. I think he's a long time guy and I think he'll be very effective. Any questions or how do you feel about it? Yes, sir. Uh, do we normally, I don't know what we did with John, is it a, a yearly contract that we I, We talked about that. We talked about that. What we did, uh, we do not have a contract with John and neither does TDA. I told him that we did have a contract with Mary, but with our accounting service, we did not have a contract. And uh, I ask him, uh, I think in front of you, I believe you can make sure that I did this. I said to him, Matt, we're going to want to know that you're going to do the work for the amount of money that we're paying John. And he said, absolutely. And then the secondly, the other big issue is, can is he capable of storing all, you know, you know what John's done. John's got 30 years from both TDA and CC, well, not quite 30 on CCEDC, but a number of years materials. Uh, we typically bring all of the originals to John so that when I go out, we all move around, everybody changes, he's got all the stuff. Matt will do that. He asked uh, if, he, if we cared if he put as much on computers as we can, and we thought that was fine and we didn't have any objection to that. Uh, he will make that accessible. Oftentimes when we call him, we're, we need a map or we need something that, you know what I mean, we're working with a prospect, can't find a map. He will make that accessible to Mary anytime she wants it. And what he's going to do is have, if he's not available, he's going to have an employee that knows about it so the employee can help Mary get what she needs. Um, so we had that discussion. But no, we've not had a long-winded answer for no. No contract. Do you think it's... I, I don't know. It just it always seems like it's a good idea to have it in black and white somewhere because there's always I, I it's true. sometime in the future they'll say, well, you know, I don't remember it that way. I and agree. It's I nice to go back and refresh right. your memory. We're all guilty of it. I mean, I, I guarantee you things we talk about today, you ask me this time next week and I'll say, huh? I won't remember, <laughs> I won't remember who said it. <laughs> Would you say that, uh, tell me how, uh, Formal or informal that needs to be. For example, is this the type of contract that we could sit down with Matt and hammer out? Uh, or uh, I'm thinking of the, you know, not that we don't want attorneys to look at it. It might be better to have. I'm just bringing it up. We could certainly, I could sit down with him, Mary could, we could sit down and hammer out an agreement with him, sure. bring it back to the executive team. Let's see, now, we, do we have a, uh, I'm trying to think of that. Before the board will be voting on that, we have a... We have nothing. We have a board meeting. That would so be, we meet prior to the board meeting? Prior to it. Yeah, I think we, we meet 10, at 1030. Well, that's what I mean. That's yeah. the board yeah. meeting. Yeah. But we well, don't have an executive committee meeting. Well, what? no, but here's what I'm thinking. I could put together a... Uh, by the way, that's not a bad idea. I think you're right on that. Because I, I do think your point's well taken. Yeah. 
I could put together a contract with Matt and um, then we could distribute that to all of you and you could look at it and say, Dick, add this, take that out, whatever you want done we'll do. Uh, we'll get with Matt, have him agreeing to it and then when we go to the exec team or go to the board, we'll have a document to give them. Is that what you're suggesting, sir? Yeah. I, and again, I, think, uh, I think you put the ball in their hands. I agree. They uh, are custom. Uh, most major accounting firms have engagement letters. Oh, you're good. Uh, and they uh, could very easily put up a simple Great. engagement letter and what their responsibilities are and what Perfect. Uh, the duration would be. And that kind of stuff. That's a very good suggestion. We will, in my opinion, we ought to do that. I do agree with the mayor. Well, and, and I think it helps. I mean, you know, if for whatever reason something happens in the future where someone says, hey, the board did something wrong with the money. Sure. And so now all of a sudden they're going to take you to court and someone's got to pay those costs and everything else. Sure. They would want it to protect them, saying, hey, you know, we're, you know, if, if something is found wrong, we're not going to step forward and pay the bill. You guys don't have to, or vice versa, whatever's appropriate. So. Okay. Good idea. Mary? Um, I think what I would do, I, I, I agree with all that, by the way, but I think what I would do is I would think about what we want out of his services. I mean, like for instance, there's the several things that are very important. Just an example would be that he's going to be the keeper of the maps and the paper documentation and all of that, like John is. Yeah. So that's maybe not something that typically would be in an accounting engagement letter. So we need to really think through yeah, some of those sure. other things so that we can let Matt know when he puts together the letter that that needs to be included in it. Okay. But I agree with John, it's like when we did my contract, I did the contract. Good. I mean, I was responsible for actually putting together the contract. And the other thing that we'll want to have in there, I'm sure that they obviously have errors and emissions insurance or professional liability insurance, which is what Greg's talking about. Sure. We want to make sure that all of that's in there too. Because okay. if there's any issue, Mary, would you consider doing me a favor? Mm -hmm. Assuming that the executive committee feels that this is an appropriate way to go, uh, would you consider providing an outline of the things that you believe are important? Yes. And I'll do the same, and then we'll put them together and give them to Matt and let him come up with it. Does that sound reasonable? It does. Okay. All right. Uh, how do you feel about this, guys? Is this something that, I think you had your hand up, Patty, and I didn't mean I to shut you down. also... Uh, Committed to a three-year term to be on the board of directors. Of the, oh, the chamber. Yeah. Good. Good. Did you? How do you feel about it? Wonderful. Okay. Warm and dearly. D. Do you know him? He's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You Do you guys know him? Okay. Um, I think you will like him. He's pretty low key, like kind of laid back, uh, but a nice guy. Nice and, guy. And uh, I think he has two children. Am I right? Does uh, anybody know three? Three. I'm not sure. Two or three children three. and. Just a good young guy interested in the community, and I, I think he'll be right what we're looking for. But it's so it's on the table for you. That's my recommendation. If you are amenable to that recommendation, I'd like for us as a group to make a recommendation to the full board and either get him approved or not. So how do you feel, guys? I'm moved. Yeah, <laughs> second. <laughs> to to complete it, uh, D in the way that, that you just heard. In other right. words, Mary right. will put together an outline. I'll give her some tips. She'll give me some. We'll put together what we think. Or we'll give Tim, have him do a letter, and that'll be our contract. Is that okay? Is there a second to D's motion? Yes. Patty Hornbuckle. Okay. Discussion? Um, yes, sir. Didn't you mention he was going to start coming to at least the board meeting? I did not. That's a very good point. We, we did talk with him about that. He's going to be at the 1018 board meeting, I believe, because he, we talked to him about what was happening at our board meeting, our annual meeting. We're going to have Lynn Ball and all the stuff going on. And um, so he, he will be there for that. So um, uh, any other, thank you, sir. Any other questions, comments before your vote? All right, you've heard the motion from uh, Dee Kruger, seconded by Patty Hornbuckle. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. So we will make that recommendation to the board, 
and Mr. Beckley will be there. You'll get to meet him and talk to him. We'll have him stand up, and actually, Dee will have him stand up. I'm going to not be able to attend the annual meeting and that board meeting because my son and his wife are having a baby on the 11th. And we're going to California. So. Can't they schedule I told them that. I, actually, I didn't even realize it was on the same date. I looked at the calendar and went, oh, God, I'm right in the middle. So I'll miss that. California. I know that. You said that. Oh, California. oh I'm sorry. San Diego. San Diego. Yes. Can Johnny and I ride out with you? We're going to Palm Springs. Are you really? Yeah. You going there? <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. So that's the deal with Beckley. Uh, the next thing is we wanted you to be aware that tomorrow night um, we're going to the Tatable City Council to uh, appeal for our, I believe the amount is, is it? 10 with the deal with Hopper, but this is a $5,000 payment of the 10, correct or am I wrong? I believe you're right. I'm, I'm not I sure that's are. right, but something like that. The uh, city budget is 5000 and appropriates 10. Okay. Well, I'm going tomorrow night. We're going to talk to them. We've obviously had a pretty dramatic turnaround uh, from being 65000 in debt, mm -hmm. and not the last time I met with them, to being in better shape today. Mm -hmm. They have all our financials. They have uh, everything. We give them a copy of the annual report, so they have all of, hopefully, the information that they need to support us. Um, so I just wanted you to be aware that I will be going there, and if they approve that, uh, they might, in the near future, get, get the money to us. So I'm, I'm just making you aware that that's upcoming, okay? Now, that kind of ties in. Do Are you... Is everyone... I've kind of forgotten where we are with this, and I wanted either... Uh, tell you, or I, if you already know, I don't want to waste your time. Is everybody aware from our previous meetings of what uh, the Tatable Development Association is doing with our new industrial park? Are you aware of about where it is, what we're doing, and where we are in that process? Do you know everything going on there? Okay. We're, we're trying to get an option with uh, the Hopper brothers, who are Fred Hopper's sons. They own about, I don't know, nine. It's three. about it's 95, 96. you have your drawings. Acres. Acres. I think you have that. About 95, 96 acres. We're going to make a, a direct swap of our 80 acres in the industrial park, or in the uh, ADM park. This ground is this area here. This is Route 29, and this is Route 104, and it kind of sits along in here. We're hopeful that we can figure out a way to make this zoned, commercial to tie in with the rest of the area that is already commercial out by behind Walmart, west of Walmart. And then this on 104, now we're not positive this goes with it, it could be just here, but this site would also maybe be zoned commercial to further tie in there. And then the rest would be about 65 acres. It has a little creek through it, some drainage issues that we'll have to contend with. But we think that our development costs will go from around somewhere between 5.5 to $6 million on the old park out at ADM, which we can't even do because we can't get sewer to it, as you know. Uh, we, the sewer cannot accept any more load. Uh, here we th we're hopeful that our development costs could be, let's, let's say that, could be cut in half because you've got water and sewer in the area. Uh, it's more amenable for development than the one, the other one. So we're going to talk about that with the council too. I've called four of the aldermen. Ken Hart called four of the aldermen. We've had a brief conversation, so we didn't backdoor them, you know. So we've told them about that because they do want to see some action on the industrial park. So that's just an update so that you guys know where we are in the status. Um, we were to Mary and I and Ken Hart had a meeting on. Oh, it was Beckley to interview Beckley. At the same time, do you see this in your packet? Do you have some suggestions? What we were trying to do, hopefully you have that in your packet. Yeah, we we told you that we would come back to you with some recommendations on who ought to serve. And what we're talking about here, guys, is our trying to accomplish the goals that we've laid out for the balance of 2013 and 2014. So what we, we were thinking, and th these are not, you understand, we've not talked with anybody about this. We've not asked anyone to serve. These are only suggestions, because I wanted to get your input before we started whipping this stuff out. Uh, the suggestions are for goal number one, which you'll find on your agenda, we'd like to ask John Curtin, Mr. Hines, and Larry Peterson if they would serve on that committee to help accomplish that goal. 
And number two, uh, the second goal would be D, Greg First and Allen, Mary. Third would be Mr. Deer, uh, Mr. Hart, and Mayor Brotherton. But these are only suggestions, and we recognize that we're all going a lot of different ways. And if these don't work, we'll, we'll substitute people, we'll do whatever. Because we've not asked anybody to do this. These are the ideas that I was to bring back to you. Do you guys have copies of that? Uh, no, that's the next one we're going to get to. Too. Like to Does he, would yeah. you give so copies I, of that to... You didn't get this in your... I don't think so. You can get it. Well, that might have been one of the next files. Did you get it, Greg? Yeah, I'll get it. I'll, I'll get one in a minute. Yeah, I don't think right. we got one, Jim. Okay, <laughs> there you go. So what we're suggesting is that we go ahead and contact these people, and while you're here, I may ask those of you that are here, if you will serve. Uh, you, have, you did not know your name was going to be added to this. If you can't serve or wish not to serve, we understand that and appreciate that. We're all bound up. <laughs> We're all overworked and we understand all of it. So however it works for you. But these would be the suggestions. We tried to match somebody's, uh, some of the skills we know you have with the goal a little bit to the best of our ability. So are there any suggestions on this at all? Would you like to see any changes? Would you like to see these people approached? What would you like? Could we ask for, because I thought the purpose of subcommittees was to involve more of the board more people it is. in doing things. It is. So I'm just thinking about goal to the social media subcommittee. Could we ask for volunteers of the whole board to see if anyone has an sure. interest in that? Sure. Because somebody could have an interest that we don't know about. And a skill. And a skill. Tears on board. From I mean, I'm thinking about that goal, too. I don't know about the others. Well, I know you don't want to give it too Real big. quickly, what were the goals? They're on the agenda, sir. Look on your uh, agenda for today's meeting, and they're on the second page. And then we tried to match the goal with the person, Jim. That's what we were trying to do. You can go number one is funding. Right. Yeah. Number exactly. two is marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And number three is Social media industrial parts development. Yeah. Correct. And we don't even know that that does match your skill. We just thought, sure. you know, we needed it. <laughs> we were just trying to match people. You got a good idea, D. Um, we wouldn't. Yeah, I guess we wouldn't be able to get, we probably need to go to the board and tell the board what we're doing. It would be and a good time to ask for them for we volunteers. For the Let's do that. Okay. Is everybody okay with that if we do that? We'll go with this initially here. And, and for those of you that wish to serve, let me just go down and let's find out. Mr. Hines, would you consider helping on sure. uh, goal number one? Sure. Okay. D, would you help on goal number two? Yeah. Uh, Mary, you'll help on the goal number two. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Deer on number three, because sure. you're involved with that anyway. Mm -hmm. and, and Greg, you'll yes. concern. We thought we needed you on that one because we're going to get into zoning and all yeah. kinds of deals right. there. So, okay. Is that okay with you? Yeah. All right. So we'll go to the board. We will give them this list, and then we'll take these suggestions. D, you'll be running that meeting, so mm -hmm. ask for volunteers. Get them on the committees they want. If we want to go to five on each committee, that'd be great. Whatever, whatever works. I'm not sure I'd go any more than five yeah. people, just because I'm thinking we probably won't get as much done. You know how it is when you get too many people on. Yeah. But uh, whatever you wish to do, just proceed with that D in the way okay. that you like it to go. Your idea is a good one. Is that okay? Is everybody all right with that? I'm not going to vote on this. We're just going to take it to the board. These are the okay. All right. Why don't you change that name, Dr. Hines? Did we? Somebody put it down here wrong. Oh yeah, oh, yeah they Fine. sure did. Yeah. I wish I was the Whoever did the last, yeah, get his that's name problem. correct. Okay. Phonetically, it's good. Yeah, it is. That's how it most people say. We're sorry, Mr. That's okay. That's we sorry. apologize to you. Once I call you for food, you. That's don't right, man. Yeah. Bring it in, a bill. That's all. Right. <laughs> all right. So Dee will take care of this at our board meeting, yes, and I she'll am. get uh, those that wish to participate and try to get more ownership in it. That's a good idea, Dee. All right. Uh, next, the update for plans for the CCEDC. Mary, do you want to head that discussion, please? I do. Uh, just let me pull up the appropriate note here. First of all, uh, everything seems to be in good working order. I talked to Dan Rapp yesterday, and he has very graciously consented to provide up to 150 lunches for oh Lord, people gosh. at the, wow. for the annual meeting because uh, he understands how important this is to our community and to our organization. So um, 
Well, that's outstanding. But anyway, I thanked him profusely uh, on, you know, yesterday when I spoke with him. I also talked to Lisa Houston from Agricel, who is sort of the coordinating person for Craig and for Jack Schultz. And she forwarded me yesterday a press kit which uh, has all the information in it about them and the marketing information about the event. It will provide an introduction so that Dee can introduce them properly at the meeting. And um, one of the things, Dee and I met today a little bit just to kind of talk about various things, among them uh, the social media and where we might go with our marketing efforts. But we were t I've been thinking after my discussion yesterday with Lisa and with Dan, that one of the things we ought to do, remember, we're, we're really a month away here from that meeting. Um, I thought maybe I could call Randy Miller and see if he would allow us to do some PSAs uh, that he would run uh, repeatedly on the station about the upcoming meeting. And I thought it might be good if we could get a couple of board members, maybe I could do one, and we're basically doing the same thing. We're just doing it from different people um, and, you know, get that going. In addition to that, you, Dick, had mentioned that we might want to run um, some ads in the paper. Dee was telling me about the, uh, the um, Breeze as a thing where if you buy two ads, you get three free or something mm -hmm. like that. So I I'll look into that, but I think we need to get going on that. We need to get going on it quickly. So I'm kind of looking for anybody who might be interested executive committee members uh, who might be interested in cutting a PSA. Greg would be good. Sure. Yeah, well, if I thought, I will go ahead and mention it Monday when I'm on the radio Monday. Perfect. Okay. Great. Thank you for your help. But if we could do that, seeing we could get Randy to play these all the time, then, you know, that would be really great for us. Mary, do you need us to authorize you to spend a certain amount of money on various advertising here for this? I don't, I haven't even looked into what that would cost. Well, I'm trying I mean, to get as much of it for free as possible. I know, but maybe we can just pick a number and authorize it. Well, Patty might have an idea. I have an idea. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what. Okay. I don't know the paper, so you know, cut you some slack, too. She might. Okay. Yeah. Well, why don't we just leave it with the executive team that you know that Mary is going to do a little advertising for this. We're going to have to pay for some of it. Some of it we may get without paying, but we're going to pay for some of it. So just so that you know, those bills will be coming in. Okay, we won't, okay. We won't proceed with that. Just let you go with it, Mary. Okay, and I, I think we're in good shape. I've connected Lisa with Melissa at the hospital. Um, Lisa and, and I, I told her I'd check back with her in the next couple of weeks. She and I have had a couple of conversations. I think we're good. I mean, okay. I think we're going to be good. Okay. And you're going to cut the thing off at 150. When you get 150 yes. people, that'll be That's it. That's exactly okay. right. That's perfect. So we have to talk about a little bit about the, uh, I can do that with Patty and Linda, about the logistics of taking the reservations and okay. how we're going to do that. Okay. Um, so that's good. Um, Dick, could I just kind of have the floor here for just a second? You've got it. On you can keep matter. it. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. couple things. First of all, in the meeting that Dee and I had, because she knows those bylaws backwards and forward, we were talking about the fact that we have to have a nominating committee. And our bylaws call for a nominating committee to be put in place prior to the annual meeting. Uh-oh. And the nominating... <laughs> Those damn bylaws. Well, yeah. 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 Pesky little yeah. devils, aren't yeah. they? <laughs> I'm so we have a solution. Okay. Um, Dee and I just sort of said, well, you know, we only got a month to go here, so what we would be willing to do is constitute the nominating committee. She and I would. <laughs> And this time, <laughs> this time, really, all we have to do is we have to put together the, the ballot, which in, will include the officers, the board of directors, Matt, and also we will be needing recommendations for a secretary recorder because that is a part now of our bylaws, and that is empty, and that person would be the person who transcribes the minutes, basically. Correct. So we need to maybe ask Ken if he had known somebody from the bank who would do that, or we need to get somebody to, 
to be doing that. And and they would, you know, we, we would need to have that name prior to the meeting. Okay. So Is there to... anything in the by <laughs> just shows you my <laughs> knowledge of the bylaws. I'm sorry to ask this question. It's really does there have to be three members, two members, okay? It doesn't say. It doesn't, it doesn't say. say. Good. So what, Is there anybody who would make a motion? I'm fine with having Mary and Dee do it. Let's get it going and get it moving. Would anybody care to make that motion? So moved. Okay. Patty? Second. Okay. Second by Mr. Lawrence. Uh, for them, what we're doing is giving them the authority to proceed as our members of the nominating committee and, and to address the issues that are uh, to make it where our, we're meeting our bylaws. That's a very good point. Any other discussion? Yes, sir, Mr. Deal. <laughs> I looked like you had a question. Yeah. I looked like you had a question. I you had a question. I thought I could have stayed home and listened. Uh, are we also naming president, vice president, or is that part of the... Dick has, you have another, I think you have another year, don't you? I have no idea. Yeah, oh, I, was I just served yeah, when they kicked me <laughs> out. So I don't know what ever happens. Didn't like, you marry me? Seven years. Years. I, I don't I heard think I. Seven. I don't think so. I think I'm just an so. interim. Yeah, yeah. Or, 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 I'm an interim. No, so you were voted <laughs> upon uh, last year at the board meeting. I was. Yes, yeah. but that's, yeah. a, that's no, uh, one year. Yeah. One year. Is it a one-year term or two? The officers are. I think it's seven. Yeah, I think it's seven years. The officers are elected. All those in favor? Yeah, but I think it's a two-year term. I think we changed it to that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. You guys can research that right, we'll and, research. and do it, and that'll yeah. be fine. And you'll be on there, or you won't. I mean, I, you'll well, be I, a media past president then. So you would. Still however you do it, I'll, I'm fine with whatever works. If okay. somebody would like to, you know, I'm, I, I'll do it any way you guys want. Whatever okay. works for everybody, we will make it work. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Deer, <laughs> good luck. Jim, we will take. I think did, did Lila say we take nominations from the floor? You guys can research okay, that we'll and figure that. that out and do yeah, it according okay, we'll to the bylaws. We'll That'd be great. We'll do that. well, I just think that the executive board ought to know who's up before that meeting. Uh, what and what the uh, who's members be, are up? Well, no, what who's going to be the candidate? Oh, I got you. I don't think we ought to go to a big meeting and all of a sudden we're going to Sam Smith. What the hell's he doing in there? I mean, man, well, I, I think would be that way. You're right. I think what we can do here is when you two finish your work, you could send an email out telling us what you believe ought to happen. Yeah, That's it. I think what we did last time. We sent the ballot ahead of time. Yeah. We sent the ballot ahead of time. You're right. And we ask if anyone had an interest mm -hmm. from the board in serving on the executive committee. That'd be fine. Or, uh, and then I think we are, by, I think we already had our names for the board. Okay. Uh, but we did ask about the executive committee. Okay. So. And then you would have a, a meeting uh, to, I was asked at the last meeting, I was thinking about, in my mind, I was thinking about the vacant board positions we have, and it's our advantage to me to get those filled because it brings new people in, gets us the thousand bucks and all that. So I listed some of them here, but all, we didn't ask these people. So all we'll do is get this to you guys, and you can talk about it and get who you want. Oh. You're the nominating committee, so you can... Okay, well, if you yeah. have other suggestions... Well, and I was going to ask Mr. Deere and Mr. Hines, because see, I didn't get to talk to them. I just no, I know. Time. But maybe we can get some names from Payne. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get you some. Yeah, get us okay. some names of... Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I don't think we necessarily You're ahead of me here, but people. that's coming. I was going to ask you... Yeah. No, we don't I'll have I'll talk to Jim Randolph. No. He might be a good candidate. It's no, but I think you have... I think... Do we... We were ratifying the executive committee and the board of directors. It's basically a ratification. Okay. But if there are people, you have to be, serve on the board before you can go to the executive committee. Correct. So if there are people on the board who had an interest in coming on to the executive committee. They can make that now. They can make that. And sure. there's only so many seats, and then we'd have to say these are the people who are up to okay. the executive committee. All right. Is everybody clear on the motion? What we're doing is establishing Mary and Dee as our nominating committee, and then they will proceed to make sure we meet our bylaws. Yeah. yeah. Is everybody okay with that? All right. You've heard the motion from Patty Hornbuckle, seconded by Mr. Lawrence. All in favor. Are we rigging this together or what? Yeah. I'll tell you what. <laughs> What of this says anywhere close to bylaws? I have no idea, but we're rolling. Uh, you've heard that motion from Patty, seconded by Mr. Lawrence. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? 
All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we also were, oh, Mary, you, you didn't get to finish your other topic. I just have one other thing. Okay. Um, I'm going to be putting together in the next couple months a, a schedule for meetings uh, in 2014 okay. because I have to hand those out at the December board meeting. And I was kind of talking this over with Dee um, earlier today. I don't know. I mean, and I'm just throwing this out there as a suggestion. First of all, we need to reconsider um, changing the day because Paul can't be here. Um, and it's also difficult, by the way, for Dan Ernie, who uh, has a, a conflict on the third Wednesday. So we need to consider changing the day. I would suggest that we go uh, to the second Tuesday or Thursday. Um, but, but I'm just throwing that out there. So. Be thinking about that and just kind of let me know your preference uh, well, or let me know what you think about that. Mary, what about this too? Why don't you contact Paul mm -hmm. and find out when he can make it? Because we're did. doing this for, oh, you already did? Yeah. And contact Dan Ernie okay. and find okay. out okay. when. We'll thank you, Dee. Thank, you. thank you, Dee. Watch the stand. Why don't you contact yeah. those two elevator works fine. and see when they can, yeah. and then contact these when folks and see if they're still available, because we don't want to trade Paul and not, lose, yeah, really broke. lose the mayor yeah. or lose okay. Mr. Hunter. <laughs> <Hunter's laughs> where it's just a little bit broken. Well, actually, it'd be it's better for me if, if they let me know their preference. Okay. All right. Would see you guys do that, please? Would you let Mary know your preference if we uh, would be thinking about changing the date of our meetings? Would that work for you? What day would work? What day would not? Second, uh, I'm looking no, at it doesn't matter. Okay, get mean? that get that to Mary if you wouldn't mind. If anybody has a special date that will or won't work for you, okay? Because we don't want to get That'd Paul on and then lose somebody else. So that'd okay. be helpful. And then and then only one more thing. Okay. We were looking at the schedule of meetings. <coughs> I'm not really sure that that it's necessary to have an executive committee meeting the week before a board meeting. Uh, which effectively would mean that we would take away two executive committee meetings. We would drop from six executive committee meetings to four. And I, I mean, I just, I, I, I can't imagine a circumstance. The nature of what we do is pretty slow moving. I can't imagine a circumstance where much would change, you know, between the week before a board meeting and a board meeting. If it's necessary to call a meeting, we could do that. But, you know, it's just like today, for instance. We're a month from probably the biggest meeting we ever have all year. And we're taking care of the business that needs to be taken care of. I do all the follow-up work anyway, most of it. And so, you know, it wouldn't be necessary to have a meeting a week before the annual meeting. So I just, I'm just thinking, and the only reason I'm saying that is because I think people have a tendency to have to go to a lot of meetings. And I think for us to be, to retain interest for people, particularly new people coming on and stuff like that, I don't know that we really, you know, want to be meeting people to death. And I just don't see that that's not a, a necessary thing. Okay. What's your preference, gentlemen? Is that something that you would consider, or do you feel that we need that meeting? Uh, my own opinion would be I don't think we do need the meeting. It's okay, up to you guys. Thing too. Is it in the bylaws? <laughs> well, that's a good point. I don't know. That's a good point. Yeah, if it's in the bylaws, then. I don't remember if it says the number of executives. I don't think it does say that. I don't think it does, no. I don't think Mayor, it how do you feel about that? Well, I, I, I don't like extra meetings anymore than anybody else, but by the same token, I don't like coming to the meeting and being on the executive board and not knowing anybody else that any more than someone that's not on the uh, well, you still executive work, though. board. Well, I hope so. But, I mean, it's just, you know, that would be the only thing. You're like, kind of touch bases and get all your ducks in a row prior to going in front of everyone else. Good point. So well, the we, other thing, I mean, the other, the other way that could be handled is for members of the executive committee, I could call them. Yeah. And brief them, you know, uh, on yeah. things that right before sure. me. And, and that's something. And I think that would probably be fine. Well, Mary, rather than take an action, we haven't get a lot that we haven't given a lot of thought to. Mm -hmm. This was the first that I had heard yeah. about that. Yeah. Well, we didn't. Would it be okay with you if we um, 
put that as an agenda item on our next executive team meeting. Okay. Go ahead, keep it on for this year, the, the next exec team meeting. We don't really have one. Until the 18th. No, the 18th is a board meeting. Right. What's and the, then we, we have don't enough. have one after that. Then we have the 10th of December. That's a board meeting. Right. That's so, an executive team meeting. Uh-uh. It's a board meeting. Board meeting on the 10th. You're right. I'm sorry. So. October 10th. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. So the calendar says 10:30 uh, October 18th for the executive board. No, just it's just four and then board. noon. No, that's the, the eats, board meeting. The eats is at noon, right? Um, yeah, actually, the, the program. The, yeah, the program is at noon. Yeah, right. Is there? Where's your? I don't have my. Does anybody have their uh, their meeting schedule? I don't know. Oh, no. no, I don't. Well, I'll look. Probably up okay. on the. Why don't you look at uh, it? I'll look at I, it, but I don't think we have an executive yeah, it's just a board Because remember, we don't have one needs. month after a board meeting. We might have one in November. Do I have one in November? Let's see here. Yes, we do. We have one the 21st of November. Okay. So that would be good. Bring it. Put it on the next agenda. Okay. We will have time to think about it now, and we can make, maybe, maybe make a better decision. Okay? okay. Would that work, Mary? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also, at the last, I'm going to wrap this, guys, so you can get going. Um, at the last committee meeting, we, you know that we have, I think we gave you the, um, if you, do you recall this, guys, we gave you this sheet which showed you where we have vacancies. Do you remember that? I did not have your input from you two when I did this. But we met with, uh, it was that day that we uh, talked to Matt Beckley. So I had Ken and Mary and myself, and we tried to come up with some names just for, Mm -hmm. Consideration. Nobody's been asked. Nobody. Nothing's happened. We're just trying to compile a thing of names. So we came up with Brent DeMichael. You know Brent, the head of the mental health thing. Randy Mitchelson's a lobbyist with CIPS, former alderman. Gary Blackman's an optometrist. Is he an optometrist? Well, optometrist. Uh -huh. uh, Rich Shaw owned a furniture store next to me mm -hmm. out on 29. Bob Appleton mm -hmm. owns Apple Muffler and Taylor Bone oh, Springfield. Okay. Janacy works for the county. Good man. Uh, good man, I think. Aaron Ridenauer is the new head of Shelby, is it? Electric? The, it, it I think it's called Continental something. That's the, it's the, um, the apparent of the uh, electric cooperative. Okay. He'd it's be Ridenauer. someone we need on here, I Aaron think. Ridenauer. Right. Uh, Jordan, I'd like to cross Jordan off right now. I talked to Jordan yesterday and today, and he'd like not to do it right now. He wants to come on later, but he can't he do it right now. He's got too much going on with charging people. Uh, Ed Downs owns the card shop up here right down the street. Great guy. Worked for Sangamon for 25 years. Jerry Hepburn runs the uh, Rock Quarry in Nokomis. We thought he'd be a good guy to have on there. Dan Coker runs, you know what Dan Coker does. George Yard, you know. Rick Champley, I think all of you know. And Ed Salisbury. Do all of you know Ed? Ed's an appraiser in the community. Um, more my age kind of guy. Um, in the 60s, young maybe. Pardon me? Young guy. Yeah, young. Real, real very, very, <laughs> very, young, very young. Very young. Very young. young. Uh, so, what we'd like to do then is give these names to our nominating committee, correct? And well, then we need yeah. some PENA input mm -hmm. because we've had none and we admit that. So, we're looking for your input. Well, remember these names, though, have got to fit into those slots. Yes. They've got to fit into the slots where we have the yes. openings with the bylaws. By the way, I apologize. Um, I did not include uh, uh, Ms. Luttrell because I didn't know her first name until today. Who's Luttrell? Oh, the she's lady. She's the lady. I forgot the, about the her. The publisher of the Edinburgh paper. Yeah, we thought about her. You guys know her. Glenn Luttrell's daughter, who now is the editor of the paper in uh, Edinburgh. Good lady. Her name is now Liz Conaway. She That's got married. Right. Put her on the list. She is on the list. She wasn't on. She's not on your list. Because she was on our original list. Because I didn't know her about, name. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. And I did, Mike Bell didn't call me back to That's this morning, so, but okay, she yeah. was on the list. So we're going to, all we're doing then, Mary, here is we're giving these names to our nominating committee. Okay. We are saying that you need to seek Payne's input because you've had, they've had none here, and we want their input. And there's several <laughs> spots that only Payne people can fill in that, in our... Um, is it just one or two? I thought it was two. I thought, but maybe it, maybe I'm wrong. Well, it's well, on the, it's yeah, on the yeah. it, You could have to fill an at large spot too. Yeah, so give us names. I mean, if you have three or four names, guys, give them okay. to us, and then we'll help talk that, to you about. Jim, do you have this? Yeah, okay. I got it in my okay. files too. Okay. 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 Okay.
the only other name that was floating around at one time, he's very helpful with us on the uh, drive for Tenasca and going to uh, Springfield was um, Gary Sperling. Oh, that's a good one. Uh -huh. oh, that's Gary Sperling. He's on our board. He's on, he's on our board. board. He is on the board. Yeah, okay. he is on the board. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Lawrence? Now, Mary, we've got an embarrassing situation for me that we should have nominated an electric Blaine Cornwell from the First National Bank last year. Okay. Uh, the scenario of that's kind of a long story, but if you remember... I do recall that. Yeah. Okay. In December of 2011, we sent out this questionnaire as to whether you wanted to continue on the board and Correct. would you be willing to pay the $1,000. Correct. That letter, I'm not sure it originated with Dick or Mary, went to, I mailed it. Went to Dave Combs, who had oh. never been on the Economic Development Board, but he had been on the TD, uh, TIDC and TDA board. Now He was on our board. Yeah, he was on our board when I first came, Dave Combs. With, when Rita was here? Possibly. He, he was on our well, board. Well, not currently. Not currently. But that mailing to him, he responded very late in 2012, where most people had responded by early March and we uh, were starting to collect the bills on $1,000. Uh, and he said, uh, yeah, he wanted to be a director, but he was deferring to the new president of the bank, Blaine Cornwall. Okay. And this was right in the week of October 18th when we had our board meeting and added the uh, choices to the, the board. Mm -hmm. And I think it was within a matter of days of that meeting that the First National Bank sent a check for $1,000 and said uh, director's fee for Blaine Cornwall. And in the transition, uh, I guess it's bad communication on my part, but we did not get him on the October 18th list as far as uh, uh, being elected to the right. Why is this, why am I thinking that I had a conversation with him about this? Now that you mention it, I feel bad. I feel very badly. I remember talking to him. Yeah, I, and he talks to me all the time. But we need him on the board. He's a great guy. We it's an oversight on our part. Yes. Well, have Mary, to are you comfortable calling him and sure. explain that to him and tell him? In fact, I know what I would do. You guys would have to decide. But I'd tell him because we didn't invite him to any of the meetings in 2012. I'd say what he paid was for. The next now. year, now because it's an oversight on our part from my perspective. So I'd say we want him on the board and right. bring him, bring him as a person to be approved and tell him it's we're sorry. It's just kind of a he kind of well, came the, to Taylorville at that the bank, time. The bank has been very regular in paying a thousand dollars. Yeah, uh, they always well, have all the year. Yeah, I'll explain. That explain we to him it was an oversight on our part. Yeah, all that he'll <laughs> understand that. He's a good guy. Okay. Okay, but get him on the board because you'll like him. He's a good guy. Okay. Good fellow. Does that help you, sir? Yeah. We'll make sure it's taken care of. Now I have two more areas that uh, I think we need a representative from the insurance industry. Okay. The insurance agents got as much to gain as anybody in the banking field or uh, whatever. And I only suggest Gary McNeely, whom I believe would uh, decline as being overworked. He has the biggest act in town as far as all sorts of uh, insurance coverage and property and liability and city and, and that type of stuff. But uh, uh, insurance agents have a lot to gain by new business and new residents in the Taylorville. Okay. Alternatively, I uh, would mention Eric Kale. Uh, Eric has been uh, chairman of the uh, Kiwanis Club uh, on that board. He's been chair of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm not 
sure that he he seems to have time uh, so that uh, uh, again I think uh, you know the insurance field has a lot to benefit and uh, uh, ought to be a source of getting some contributions uh, and I also think we ought to have a representative from the realtors uh, going back to TIDC, uh, we had uh, Bernard Kirby on the board, and Bernard, uh, my opinion, kind of ruffled the feathers on uh, the TIDC board. Um, not, uh, I don't know whether the question that uh, uh, he uh, wanted to market uh, some of the lots that TIDC had and expected uh, uh, not to do that for free or whatever, but uh, uh, um, he was, in a way, uh, somewhat at odds with the TIDC board. Uh, he's being followed by his son, Joe Burry, a uh, young fellow uh, who I think is uh, uh, pretty decent, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just throwing out a suggestion as I think uh, we ought to have a, a realtor. And alternatively, uh, Marilyn Kennedy has donated uh, not much, but 100 bucks uh, pretty regularly. Uh, so up to a point, I think we ought to have the realty firm. Okay, Mary, will you consider as our nominating committee, would you consider an insurance person and a realtor? Uh, and both of those are, particularly the insurance is a good suggestion. Okay. It wouldn't hurt to have a, a realtor on there. Okay. Uh, and you guys can play with that and come up with a name. For, okay. And you've got some names here to go by at the mm -hmm. bottom, which you you have that. And then I'm going to get We will take things. your thing into account, Mr. Yeah, Lawrence, and make sure it works. And they'll get back to you on Pena, folks. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Is there anything else to discuss before we adjourn? Other than Pena and Taylorville, the other towns, do we have representatives from the other towns at all? I, or do we get financial I participation? Don't think so. Only Mike Bell. Did yeah, Edinburgh. 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 Yeah. And um, the problem has been, like, I think our bylaws state, uh, for one thing, a mayor from mm -hmm. another town in Christian mm -hmm. County. The problem is that those people, you know, are part-time, part -time, yeah. they work, they don't, they aren't available for the media. I've tried in the past to do that. And they really don't want anybody else to come, you know. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like they don't have anybody else most of right. the time. So it's just been difficult to get that. And then I think we... I think we asked, um, well, we had uh, Doug Black on from Dominion, which basically is in Kincaid, and we asked somebody else from Kincaid. And, and, and they decided not to do it anymore. I mean, is that something which would CJ want to? You know, I didn't even ask him that when I was there. Um, but I don't know why they decided not to do it. I, oh, I, well, he left when we wanted the contribution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I maybe we should talk to CJ about that. So you've got plenty of names to work with, and you can go. Okay. And I would add, I think it's really important that we get a reporter as soon as we can. Yeah. I mean. Well, I have no idea. I mean, since Cheryl Dagan has been gone, we've never really had anybody for any length of time show any interest in this. That's right. That's right. Okay, folks, is there a motion to adjourn? So motion. Okay, I heard a bunch of them that one. We're going to go to Mr. Lawrence. Say to Ivan, Mayor. Is there discussion? All right, you've heard that motion from Mr. Lawrence, seconded by Mayor Brotherton. All in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you, guys.